Hi guys. So let's continue with the second part of this particular chapter, which is on the strategies for selecting the target markets and also positioning. Okay, so I hope you still remember yeah, the criteria for successful segmentation. There are four of them. Okay, basis for segmenting consumer market, there are five of them. And the steps, okay, there are six steps in segmenting consumer market. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to explain to you the strategies for selecting the target markets and also the positioning strategies. Okay, let's get started. Now, um, the strategies for selecting target market. So, you already know just now, I explained to you on market. Now, what is target market? Target market is a group of people organization for which an organization design implements and maintain a marketing mix to fit the needs of that group or groups resulting in mutually satisfying exchanges that means remember in your steps to segment market right you have to create that particular four piece for this group of people so that group of people that you create the marketing mix for are actually the target market right so there are four market targeting strategies that we're going to learn in this particular chapter. First one, undifferentiated marketing. Second, differentiated marketing. Third one, concentrated marketing. And lastly, micro marketing. So let's look first at the undifferentiated marketing. Okay, this is the first market targeting strategy, which is undifferentiated. Undifferentiated means it's actually the same one. And different not different no difference that means similar same for everybody right that means a firm might decide to ignore the market segment differences okay and what they do is that they target the whole market with one offer this is what they call the mass marketing strategy okay which focuses on what is common in the needs of consumer rather than on what will be the differences among this particular people okay so this is how it looks like for the marketing segmentation that means you have one marketing mix okay for all buyers which you consider as one segment for example mineral water or drinking water okay so if you are producing your drinking water you don't actually segment the water based on different needs because people drink because of their thirsty or they need to drink to live isn't it okay so typically you have that one marketing mix for all buyer which you consider as one segment that means there's no difference okay if you are generation y people you must drink this mineral water or drinking water whereby if you are let's say male you cannot drink this water you have to drink another water no Alright, so normally drinking water or mineral water are actually undifferentiated marketing. Second marketing, uh, sorry, targeting strategy is differentiated. Differentiated means you target several different market segments and design separate offer for each. Which the goal is, of course, to achieve higher sales and stronger position. And if you want to do this, differentiated marketing it will be more expensive because you will create different marketing mix for different segment okay a typical uh, product that uses this differentiated marketing will be like shampoo okay skincare cosmetics Skincare, I think you are really um, familiar with skincare, right? So let me give you an example of skincare. So there are people who have uh, oily skin. So they have uh, to, uh, 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 what they call a range, okay, a, a skincare range for oily skin. If you have uh, acne prone skin, okay, so you have a different range, uh, toner, facial cleanser, um, serum essence and everything okay that is for you to apply on your acne prone skin that means to control acne or pimples all right and then you have dry skin people or market segment three for people who have dry skins 
Okay, so what they do is that they create again facial cleanser, um, cream, okay, moisturizer, and everything with the formula whereby when people who have this uh, dry skin problems use it, it will actually hydrate their skin. Okay, so that will be the differentiated marketing examples. Understand? It means you have different marketing mix for different group of people that requires different needs. Even shampoo also. So there are people who have um, dandruff. So you create anti-dandruff shampoo. So people who have uh, perm hair. So you have for hair perm shampoo, uh, people punya shampoo lah. Alright. And then you have hair loss people. When they use the shampoo, they want anti-hair loss or strengthening a uh, straightening hair kind of shampoo okay if you color your shampoo your shampoo right? you color your hair then you might want to buy a uh, shampoo for colored hair so those are actually the products that are different for different segment or different group of people got it the third market targeting strategy is concentrated marketing okay Concentrated is also known as niche marketing, which the company will target a small share of a large market whereby they do this because the company has limited resources. Even though they are actually targeting into a small share, okay, of the, excuse me, small share of the large market, they are really aware and know, have a, what a complete knowledge about the market okay and typically when they do this they are becoming more effective and efficient a very typical example of concentrated marketing is like dunkin donuts or starbucks or we don't have dunkin donuts in kuching or in Strawa, we have uh, big apple donuts right so uh, starbucks for example is doing concentrated marketing whereby their specialty is in coffee. So typically, if you go to Starbucks or when you talk about Starbucks, you automatically think of coffee, right? Not? Okay. Even though it's coffee, they have many or variety of coffee. So you can have mochianto, cappuccino, latte, americano, uh, whatever types of coffee or how does that coffee is being prepared, right? So that is when you are a niche. That means you target a small share of a large market. That means Starbucks, they target those people who are coffee lovers. All right? So they know what type of coffee that people wanted to have. Okay? And they also have different beans. Yeah, Arabica, Colombia, Brazil, Arab, uh, Arab lah. Apa lagi? Banyak lah. All right? So many coffee beans for those coffee lovers. So that is a concentrated marketing. Then the fourth one, the last one, is micro-marketing. Micro-marketing, okay, is the practice of tailoring products and marketing program that suit the taste of specific individuals and location or location lah, all right? So, um, individual marketing which involve, when you talk about micro-marketing, micro, yeah, it is smaller than the niche, Tailoring products. You know tailor, right? Tailoring means tailor-made. That means made just for you. Okay? Whereby the programs or the uh, products, okay? The marketing programs or products need to are made, okay? According to the preferences of individual customers, which this micro-marketing for individual marketing is also known as one-to-one -one marketing. Okay, or mass customization okay, or market of one marketing. That means you typically it is made to order. Lah, okay, made to order. That means if there is an order, then there is when you made it for that particular individual customer in that particular group. A very good example is like when you go to... Uh, you have you been to Cha Time or Tea Life? All right, so they have they they are doing this micro marketing whereby 
when you go to tea life or you go to cha time right also uh, i think haika yeah uh, you know so ding tea and all those bubble tea lah but not daboba and sinfuta those are niche or ma what they call it uh, yeah niche marketing or uh, previous one just now you concentrated marketing but when you talk about micro marketing this individual marketing in the way that you want to buy tea for example or you want to buy coffee or you want to buy any other drinks at cha time okay or tea life i think tea life okay so you can go there and then you tell i want to have tea or you say oh no i don't want tea i want uh, juices right so they can make you you can choose from whatever juices are available okay whatever tea available there or coffee right and then um you are allowed to choose what you want to be inside that particular drink so you can choose in terms of the flavor okay so you can choose a uh, green tea black tea hokkaido tea Mm, jasmine tea earl grey tea whatever tea all right they have many varieties of tea so you can choose whatever you want and then you can choose the level of sugar level of ice toppings okay whatever uh toppings you want they can make and put it inside a particular drink and it is made just for you if you don't order it they don't make it that is individual marketing right while well, when you talk about local marketing in this micro marketing it involves tailoring brands and also promotion to the needs and wants of local customer group example like cities neighborhoods and also the stores a uh, very good example of this micro marketing in terms of local marketing is kentucky fried chicken kfc okay so kfc tailor their chicken to malaysian market country yeah? in the country of malaysia they know malaysian they love spicy food okay so just when kfc make it hot and spicy chicken recipe for malaysian market so you go to us for example or you go to japan you will not get hot and spicy chicken ah. they will ask you ah what is that right so they only have original recipe or that chicken that's it they only have that chicken or maybe perhaps they have other flavors that is suitable for the taste and preferences of that particular country i don't know maybe in japan they have wasabi ka? all right but in malaysia they have that hot and spicy chicken always available right not it's not like seasoning kind of um uh duration or time that you offer that particular product but it's all year throughout the whole year you will have that choice whether you can have original recipe or can uh, kentucky fried chicken kfc it's hot and spicy so that is when they customize it make it micro marketing for the malaysian nation okay and if you go to indonesia for example it's not about the chicken indonesia uh the kfc right if you've ever been there they will always offer the white rice with every kfc meal okay like for us like we normally have that kfc with the mashed potato and the coslo right or kfc with the zinger burger and that's it or yes then they have the nasi ayam right not the chicken rice but in indonesia for every meal okay for every combo meal that they offer there it will always with the white rice because preferences okay people in indonesia they typically they want they love to eat the white rice so that is when you do micro marketing based on local marketing all right i hope you can understand that now this is how it looks like of course concentrated marketing and micro marketing has diff uh, one mix for one segment that you target okay the last part of this chapter is positioning okay so when you talk about positioning it is position okay position but the product position is the way the product is defined by consumers yeah on some important attributes okay and the place the product occupies in consumers minds relative to competing products that means when you talk about product positioning you are putting into customers mind about the product that you are offering so there are seven positioning bases 
okay attribute price and quality use or application product user product class competitors and also emotion so typically marketers can choose and can use a combination yeah they can combine two or three or four right positioning basis to position their product in the consumer's mind in relative to the competitor's brand now let's look at first one which is the attribute okay attribute is when you position the product okay uh, in association of the product with a product feature and attribute or customer benefit right for example i think you know panadol right okay panadol when do you consume or when do you eat panadol and then i said say the muscle untuk pening kepala all right so panadol use this positioning base based on its attribute which is the customer benefits when people feeling headache okay people will think of panadol right you don't think of other brands like uh, they also have alpha mo of a mall i think of a mall right and there are many other brands of actually paracetamol all right the drug name is actually paracetamol but then people will have put in their mind that if you headache you don't take paracetamol but when you headache you take panadol panadol is actually paracetamol lah. anyway right so that is how panadol uh, position itself based on its attribute okay second based on price and quality Okay, so you can put high price or low price, yeah. So if high price, of course, it will symbolize of some high quality, while low prices, not low quality. But we talk about you position it as low price as indicator of value that money can buy. Okay, for example, A Asia, they position based on low price, everyday low price, everyday no everyday everyone can fly. Right, so that is when when you talk about Asia cheap cheap tickets. Okay, it always comes to your mind when you say Asia. Okay, cheaper price, cheap tickets, air flight, and so on. Okay, next positioning is based on use or application. Okay, this is when you are stressing on the use or application of the product itself. So when people think of you want to use something, you will automatically will position it in the mind. That is the brand, or that is the product. For example, on your white shirts or white fabrics, yeah, you want to make it whiter. What comes to your mind? Clorox, right? Not okay. So Clorox are actually uh, positioning uh, as one of the. Uh, it's actually bleaching, like you want to bleach, all right? So you're stressing on the application or use of it to make things whiter, okay? So that is when Clorox. It's so what you comes to your mind when you talk about making things whiter or um, removing uh, stains, yeah, from white fabrics. But when you talk about colored one, colored fabrics or colored shirt, you don't use Clorox, right? Now, what comes to your mind? It will be varnish, right? Now. So if you know these two brands, when you go to supermarket, go to the detergent and cleaning kind of uh, aisles, right? Then you will see that particular brands, Clorox, okay, for bleaching, and varnish for bleaching on the colored fabrics, right? Number four is product user. This is when the company or the brand is being positioned based uh, on the personality or a type of user, okay? It could be like, uh, remember I told you, or did I tell you about North Face? You know North Face brand, okay? So those people who go hiking, right? If you are a hiker, a mountain climber, all right? You would know about North Face, the North Face brand, because it's one of the, I mean, the, the, um, the specialty okay the niche of it okay actually no face is also a niche right whereby you um create products okay create your apparels no face is actually clothing brand okay for people to go mountain climbing okay so you wanted to go to mount everest okay or the um whatever mount kinabalu or whatever right you have that particular uh hiking coats okay caps okay and all other equipments 
uh, including shoes and so socks, right? For you, for a type of user who loves to go hiking. Okay, so that is based on product user. Next, position and base is on product class. So product class is when the product is positioned as associated with a particular category of products. Okay, this is so easy in a way that when you talk about product class, you automatically think of that brand for that particular product category. For example, toothpaste. When you ran out of toothpaste or you wanted to buy toothpaste, typically you will say, I want to buy Colgate. Right now. Okay? So when you go to the shop, to the uh, Watson or Guardian, for example, then you wanted to buy Colgate, you, not necessarily you will be getting Colgate brand. You might take Darley, Oral-B, uh, Fresh and & White, and other brands, but... To you, as according to the positioning, okay, that Colgate is toothpaste. Toothpaste is Colgate. Right now. So it is synonym already there. Okay. Or another one is actually Maggie. Another typical Malaysian no Maggie, right? Now. Maggie is the instant noodle. If you say you want to buy Maggie, then you take different brand. But you still consider that as your mom asks you, what did you buy just now? I bought Maggie. You say, right or not? But turns out it's actually not Maggie. It perhaps um, Mummy or uh, what are the brands? Mr. Duck, is it? Right? So that is when the positioning is based on the product class itself. Right? Next one is based on competitors. So this one, your brand or your product is always been positioned against your competitor, which normally, whenever you do some uh, promotion about your product, you will always mention or you uh, make use of competitors' product or brand as part of your promotion. Of course, you will make the competitor's product looks inferior and yours is better lah course okay uh, typically if you can google also later on you look at mcdonald's and burger king okay burger king always okay and always position their product based on competitor which is mcdonald's all right uh, they even have a slogan saying is that why eat with the clown when you can eat with the king you understand what i'm saying uh, because the mascot of McDonald's is the Ronald McDonald's that like, look like a clown, isn't it? Can you imagine that? It looks like clown, right? And then Burger King is a king. So why would you want to eat with the clown when you can eat with the king at Burger King? Lah, of course, right? So there is one example of how Baskin-Robbin, Burger King, okay? Why did Baskin-Robbin Okay, Burger King, right? Uh, positioning itself against McDonald's, right? And lastly, is emotion. This is related to positioning the product by touching some market's emotion like sad, happy, romance, anger, and etc. Okay? So, um, yeah, basically, because you, when you talk about um, happy, right? Happy, you want to eat ice cream. Or, no, sad, you want to eat ice cream. No, Baskin Robin don't do that. Baskin Robin is positioning their product based on uh, when you want to have um, being fun, okay? Or another good example is Cadbury chocolates, all right? Whereby it is for happy, being happy, you eat chocolates, all right? Another emotion that you can touch is actually uh, on uh, romance for most fragrances or perfume. Okay, so you can see um, Dior advertisement, for example, of Dior perfume, love, right? So that is when it touch on the emotion of romance and also love, okay? Uh, Kit Kat, for example, then it, it touch on the uh, emo uh, being, uh, taking some break, you know, because you're so stressed and then you can stop for a while, take a break, take a Kit Kat. So that is the emotion that they play with the feelings and also emotion, Right? So like I mentioned just now, one or more positioning bases are often being used. So many products, they might use a combination of these seven when they position their brand. Right?
Move on, moving on to positioning strategies. Just now, a positioning basis. You learn seven of them. Now, in positioning strategies, there are four of them. Number one, product differentiation. Number two, positioning maps. Number three, competitive advantage. And number four, repositioning. Let's look at product differentiation. Of course, this position strategy, they are very much related to the basis that you have chosen. Yeah, All right. So you, you choose the base first and then you come up with this particular strategy. Okay. First product differentiation. This is a positioning strategy designed to distinguish one firm's product from another's. Okay. The word differentiation here means totally different. You want to make your product unique. Okay can be distinguished from one firm to another. Okay, where the aim of this differentiation is to convince the customers that a brand is significantly different, okay, or unique from the others and should therefore be demanded over competing brands. So differentiation can be done based on product. For example, iPhone. Only in iPhone, you get iOS totally different than Android phones, right not? So that is when Apple positions its iPhone differentiation strategy based on the product, whereby it offers iOS in their smartphone. But for other phones, they might be using Google Android, right not? Second, you can do it based on services that you offer to the customers, okay? Services are typically related to the hospitality, okay? How good or how well is the services offered to the market or to the customers? Unlike Asia, they position their base, well, basing, uh, basing, blah. position base is on the uh, Low prices, you sound right. I told you the Asia low prices. So when you think about Asia, low price, etiquette. But when you think about a better hospitality, good services for airline, you would think of Malaysia Airlines, for example. Okay. Next, based on the distribution. Distribution here includes how um how do you call it? Is it the how wide is the distribution? Okay, how exclusive is the distribution? Some product, you want to make it different, whereby you can only get the product at our official stores. That is, in terms of distribution strategy, you make it different from other brands or other products. Okay, Apple also use this distribution strategy, whereby you can't simply buy Apple products from anybody, but certain or selected stores only will sell apple products okay like the switch that is the authorized reseller so it makes it exclusive for um this switch to sell the product unlike uh samsung for example you can get a lot of places okay to sell samsung not only just samsung phone yeah we're talking about samsung TV, Samsung, uh, air conditioner, washing machine, and so on. Okay, there are many sellers sells that particular brand. It's, you, it's not like you can only get it from Samsung store, right? You can get everywhere. But for Apple products, for example, you want to buy MacBook Pro, you want to buy the iPad, you want to buy uh, AirPods, right? The Apple Watch. Typically, you can only get it at Apple stores, which is Switch, or some of it you can also get it Harvey Norman or Thank You, right? Okay. And other than that, no, you cannot get any other Apple products at anywhere else, right? So that is based on distribution. Next is based on people. So typically, uh, when you use this particular differentiation strategy uh, based on people, you are actually um, selling services, okay? Whereby you are positioning the people that offer that particular service. Uh, this is very common in uh, private hospitals yeah? because private hospitals, they hire the best specialists, for example. So uh, when when you talk about, let's say, eye specialists, for example, okay, you might want to think of Timberland Medical Center. Okay? Or uh, perhaps uh, because they have the best eye specialists. 
that is how they differentiate their uh, hospital with other hospitals. Yes, of course, other hospitals also have some eye specialists, but perhaps only in Timberland, you will get that particular best or uh, the number one, okay, uh, eye specialist in the world, so called, right? So that is how you differentiate it based on people. And lastly, you, oops, you differentiate it by image. Image, of course, is related to the exclusivity of the brand, okay? It can be as simple as like Louis Vuitton, LV, yeah? So you know the image is like that, okay? Or uh, Hilton Hotel, for example. So the, the, the differentiation based on the image of Hilton. So you know what to expect. You know what to think of. Oh, you talk about, oh, Hilton, you, where do you stay? Hilton. Wow, you stay in Hilton. See, you, you put something in your mind that it's very high standard. The image is very high, okay? So that is the example. Next one, second position strategy is by using the... Positioning maps. Let me put myself here. Okay. Positioning map show consumer perceptions of their brands versus competing products on important buying dimension. So it could be typical one is the price. Okay. One of the important buying dimension is price. Okay. And another one perhaps the orientation, perhaps the performance or some luxury of uh, kind of image. Okay. Is it better performance or is it luxurious kind of brand? Okay, so remember, yeah, these are how consumer think about the brand. Let's say you are Range Rover. Range Rover, you are here, this orange color, yeah. You'll be able to see that how people would think about or position your product as compared to other brands, okay? Land Cruiser, Navigator Lexus, Infinity Hummer, all right? Escalade, Escalade and so on, right? So you'll be able to see that your performance is here, your luxury is not that much, you see? If you are towards this particular area, then you become luxurious kind of brand of car, lah. So actually, car is a uh, SUV, I think. Okay. Then, in terms of performance, better one will be this Hummer H2, right? Uh, in terms of price, is it more expensive or lower? That is how you see yourself in the positioning map. Number three is competitive advantage. Okay, you can also position your product using this position strategy, which is being competitive advantage. That means you have an advantage over competitors. Look at this particular X, for example, in this particular tray. Which one capture your attention? Is it this? Or is it this one? Is it this one? Or is it the white one here? Of course, the white one, right? Because it's different. Different means you have a competitive advantage. You don't have to say that this X has gone bad or what, but it's totally different than the other X. Bukan telur masin lah, it's also an egg. You know the egg emoji, right? It's white color, right? Okay? Bukan telur masin pun, it's egg. So, um, it can be done either by offering consumer greater value, either through lower prices or by providing more benefit that justify higher prices. Or, you can offer totally distinctive product. Or, you can offer a very fast response or value-added services that other brand or other company does not offer. Okay? Or, you can do combination of this. All right. So, for example, Asia, they do this competitive advantage in a way that they offer lower prices. Okay. And uh, distinctive product, for example, Apple, iPhone, yeah, they offer distinctive product because only in iPhone you can get iOS. Totally different than the other phones, right? And fast response or value added services is just like when you go to um, Hilton, for example. All right. So, uh, when you go to Hilton, of course, the price is expensive, but you can actually get the full services given, okay? Like you are being treated like a king when you are in Hilton, for example. But not really in Hilton, Kuching, but never mind. Okay, right? And last strategy is repositioning, okay? So this is the last one, which is, remember positioning. Now you reposition it. That means 
perhaps previously consumer has something already in their mind now you want to change that okay you want to change consumer mind or consumer perceptions of a brand in relation to your the competing brands okay so take a look at this particular ads it's by coca-cola yeah coke coke specifically this one is diet coke now coke wanted to reposition their drink coca-cola drink okay do you know what is this what cover is this this let me see can i zoom in or not okay i want to zoom in this one huh good morning in this particular advertisement yeah it says good morning in this particular cup this is actually a coffee cup okay a coffee cup whereby coca-cola wanted to reposition that when normally people drink coke it's actually in the late afternoon in the evening or at night right now, for you to eat with your um lunch okay kadang, kadang you feel so hungry oh sorry so thirsty and you're feeling like drinking coca-cola so in the middle of the day right now. but when coca-cola repositioned their diet coke as good morning here in a coffee cup it is actually repositioning that particular coca-cola as the drink that you should be drinking in the morning to substitute your coffee or tea right and yes it works yeah so most americans right they drink coke as breakfast drink okay so no longer like you want coffee or tea you know i want coke for my breakfast yes so that is how coca-cola repositioned their diet coke to be the drink that you should be consuming in the morning all right so that is repositioning okay so that's it for this particular chapter i hope you are able to understand now on this particular market segmentation targeting and positioning remember you have learned there are four criteria for successful segmentation right and you also learn there are five bases of segmenting consumer market remember geographic demographic benefits usage rate and also psychographic okay and you have learned six steps in segmenting consumer market strategy for selecting target markets these are the strategies just now right undifferentiated differentiated concentrated and also my micro marketing and lastly in this chapter you have learned on positioning what is important is that you know what are the positioning bases seven of them and also the set uh, positioning strategy there are four of them for the differentiation positioning map competitive advantage and also repositioning so with that we have finished chapter four thank you for watching bye